You said, hi, guys, love the show. Do you think China will ever take the initiative to the, of the sanction war against the U.S.? In other words, will, the US, will China sanction the U.S.? You know, one of the things that China has adopted was a very low-key uh, yeah. approach to the U.S. sanction. Or China is not doing a, a, a tit-for-tat uh, counter-sanction. But they have taken steps in recent years. They take very symbolic steps, like ban um, they put a regulation on export of rare earth and also on, 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 on strategic materials like galleon and germanian china did not place outright ban but they say okay they, they will require export review you know just like how us they will require export review on everything <laughs> to china and and so so china is it's sending out a reminder like hey you know by the way we still control like 90 80 to 90% of the real earth supply oh, <laughs> and all these very important uh, 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 base commodities that you can have problems to to manufacture yourself. I mean, like ger both Germanian and Gallians are not actually rare earth. Uh, they're just yeah. byproduct of uh, other, uh, you know, one, one, one is a byproduct of aluminum production and one uh -huh. is a, a, a byproduct, I think uh, maybe copper or, but, but the thing is with mining, you know, it takes five years to bring a new mine online, you know, and, and then with aluminum, it's not just a problem of mining. It's also a problem of uh, you know, electricity consumption because because yeah, uh, aluminum production mm -hmm. is highly uh, it's, it consumes a lot of energy. So <laughs> with the with the state of the current state of U.S. power grid, <laughs> they don't have the extra capacity to support um, the uh, uh, additional aluminum production. And this is the thing, you know. We all know U.S. have crumbling infrastructure, and all the U.S. Um, privatized uh, power grids. They're just trying to squeeze out more from the consumers <laughs> than yeah. than trying to build up uh, excessive capacity. Uh, like what China is doing. China is all about building out excessive capacity for future growth. Uh, but but the, the Chinese, the American private companies are not into that. They're trying to, they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, uh, what they call economize, right? Optimize the grid, which means to <laughs> squeeze out the most of the juice out of the existing grid, which means anytime there's a natural disaster, like, you know, in Texas, we see people freeze their ass off in, in the winter. You know? And, 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 <laughs> And U.S. also lag behind in terms of uh, power transmission. Um, this is a problem that China has solved because one of the problems China faced when they're building out, out their power grids is they realize a lot of their um, resources, either for coal or for hydro, hydro, hydro power, they're located yeah. very far from the coastal cities where a lot of industrial product, uh, production happens. The, you know, for example, a lot of hydropower in China are located in the southwest mountainous area. So uh, one of the problems they had to solve was to transmit power over long distances from southwest mm. China all the way to like major cities like Wuhan or Shanghai. They were able to solve it by coming up with a very low, like high uh, voltage low loss uh, power transmission line that's a tech this is the area where china again dominate in in, in ip you know for U us just simply don't have that technology so even when they had excess excessive power cap generation capacity say outside of texas you know during yeah. the time when the when they had the winter uh shortage the other state the other power grids couldn't they're unable to pop, you know, pipe in the additional power to Texas because U.S. doesn't have that uh, ultra uh, 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 power voltage transmission line to, to allow them to do that. I mean, they don't have yeah. the, the same level of infrastructure that China yeah. has. This is, a, this is a fact that a lot of <laughs> Americans don't even aware. It's not even aware how far behind the United States have fall, fall behind uh, China in many arenas. Uh, you know, they still think China is a place where they make uh, cheap shoes and toys. Oh, no, that, yeah. Well, I was in the middle of that Texas freeze, uh, Carl, because I live in Texas. So uh, luckily I had my own uh, sleeping bag and military grade because it can sustain the uh, sub-zero temperatures and all that stuff. And, and, and I was fine. I was by myself. I 
sent the family elsewhere at that time and i stayed by myself in the house with no light with no air with nothing and i was like this is the richest country on earth and we couldn't fix a, a power grid it, it was it was pathetic literally i'm not putting down my country it's the reality of it because where is our tax money is going when we couldn't build a, a power grid that can sustain storm like that where are the highways? Where are the speed trains? Where are this? Where are that? And, and our tax yeah, money just... It's going to boil. But it's going to boil to make bombs, not to make <laughs> good flyable well, civilian yeah. planes, fairly. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's the sad truth. It's pathetic. So, yeah. Let me tackle one more topic here before I open it for questions. And by the way, guys, I got a surprise for you here. I'm going to share it with you right now. Carl and I decided we will be doing this kind of conversations on a bi-weekly, either two weeks, three weeks. So Carl is up for it. I'm up for it because that's to me a dedication to all of you because that's how we learn. It's about exchanging information, exchanging the learning process, and you need to hear different perspectives. And somebody like Carl Zah, I have great respect for him. I knew of him back then. He just never got a chance to link up with him till now, and here he is. I asked him and he said he's willing to do this. So we will be doing this on almost bi-weekly. And I can uh, uh, recommend enough for you guys to go and check out his channel also. Make sure you check it out also because that's how if you want to raise awareness, this is how it happens. And with your support, guys, we can both, you know, move forward with helping everybody to know about what's going on around the world. What I want to talk about, uh, Carl, quickly here is... Uh, uh, another area of where I see an upcoming, I won't call it tensions, but where do you see the upcoming uh, uh, competition, if we can use the term competition, regarding Boeing and China C-919 aircraft? Because now China built its own, does not need Airbus, does not need Boeing. Where do you see that going? If you were traveling in China by air before last year, Chances are that you were on board a plane made either by Airbus or Boeing. But things changed in May 2023 when C919, the first made in China large passenger jet, made its maiden commercial flight. It was a trip from Shanghai to Beijing. And now every day there are more than 10 regular C919 flights between Shanghai and Beijing, Chengdu or Xi'an. My first trip through a C919 flying to Beijing. Last time I saw one of these aircraft was in December 2022, when the first of the jets was delivered to the China Eastern Airlines. And in just 16 months, another four had been delivered. It's all happened very quickly and could shake up the entire commercial aviation industry. The whole aviation industry will be dominated by three players, Airbus, Boeing, and China's aircraft. My flight was almost full. And a crew told me that's the norm. I've served on C919 flights to Chengdu, Beijing, and Xi'an. Almost all were full of passengers. The aircraft maker Comac and the airline have clearly made an effort to improve the passenger experience, right down to the design of the baggage compartments and the seats. Comac has received more than 1,200 C919 orders. China Eastern Airlines is a big purchaser having ordered 105 of the jets. As you can see here, different groups of pilots are preparing for their flights, which are about to depart from Shanghai's Hongqiao Airport this afternoon. And among them, these three are busy preparing for a C919 flight from Shanghai to Beijing in about two hours. I've been flying around 120 C919 flights for an accumulated 340 hours. It seems what the plane is now waiting for is more international airworthiness certificates to be able to further open up its overseas market. But some experts say it's just a matter of time. I think the good news is around the corner. Tan adds that the market can find some clues from the ARJ-21, the regional jet developed by Comac. After years of development and experience in China, the regional jet was officially delivered to its first overseas customer in December 2022. And she expects the first international C919 buyers could be from the Southeast Asian market. China is trying to do, uh, yeah. they're, they're mostly concentrated on fulfilling the needs of the Chinese market, right? They're, they're aiming towards it because 
you know, there are more and more uh, 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 Chinese people are taking to air travel. There's still most of the room for growth for civilian aircraft is still in China. And, and traditionally, China imports either from Boeing or Airbus. Um, and 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 uh, and also from the uh, Embraer aircraft from from Brazil, right? So yeah, um, China has has put this uh, multi-decade effort to to produce her own civilian jet, and you know a lot of the Western media are are disparaging it and say, oh, it's, is it really a Chinese aircraft? I mean, look at all these parts are made by different American. Uh, European firms and stuff. Uh, okay, it's United States that's trying to decouple from China. China never tried to decouple from the West, and China is perfectly fine to use the Western supplier. The, the 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 first goal is to make their own aircraft, and then second is to get it certified. To get it certified internationally, it's a lot easier if your aircraft is made up of. American and European parts. Yeah, right. But going forward, what you're gonna see, I, I, I'm, you're gonna see China will start bits by bits. They're gonna re replace different components with domestically made components uh, after mm. they build out their own domestic local supply chain. Um, you know, after they already have the certification, and and I, this is gonna take some time. This is gonna, but. Given China, because they they have the market, they have the market for it, and they have yeah. the government support. So that means, um, given them, I I would given them uh, maybe five five to ten years, um, for a period to to for uh, where they have a mature platform, and and they gradually take market share away from Boeing in the domestic Chinese market. Now, yeah. once that happens, once once the, the, the Chinese uh, aircraft makers can take over the Chinese market, then it's going to be a problem for Boeing in the other <laughs> other overseas market. But but right now, the biggest market is still China. Like like just like car, China is the world's largest market for cars, and and it's also the 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 largest uh, 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 market for for civilian airplane. So so the 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 biggest fight right now is going to be for the uh, the domestic Chinese. Boeing is not doing itself any favors by <laughs> having all these incidents with its plane. I know so the door coming off when the plane is <laughs> taken. <laughs> this is a Boeing factory in the U.S. state of South Carolina. Workers here in Charleston are assembling the company's flagship product, the 787 Dreamliner. But this footage reveals some have little faith in the plane they build. Did you fly on one? Um, no. You won't fly on one. Did you fly on one of these planes? No, not really. Of 15 workers asked randomly, 10 said they would not fly on the Dreamliner. I want to fly on one of these planes. Because I see the quality of the With all the problems reported on the 787, there's 90% that's getting swept away, hushed up. It's an iceberg. In another meeting, the source told us workers are often underskilled, uncaring, and in some cases on drugs. I've seen a lot of things that should not go on at an airplane plant. People talking about doing drugs, looking for drugs. I know they don't. You think? Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like, uh, it's like, uh, right? I mean, a lot of the problem of United America right now is self inflicted. It's self inflicted problem. It's like, uh, you know, with all these problems in Boeing, all the Chinese airlines now will have even more incentive to be domestic. Yeah, so so you know, for, you know, they already have incentive from you know you Chinese government, um, but but now they have more incentive because they can look at what happened to all these planes falling out <laughs> <on> of the skies. <laughs> <That's what> I, <laughs> well, I intend to if I make it to China, I intend to take a flight for inside the country 
using the C919 uh, just to experience it. And of course, I'll, I'll report on that one. So, all right, let's take a few questions here so we can uh, have uh, Carla answer some of them here. So here's the first one here from Hong Luan. Hong Luan, by the way, Carl, is one of an avid supporter of the channel. He's been here with me since the beginning. So thank you very much, Hong Luan. A question, Carl, can you explain to some viewers who might come across this stream why Meta and Google is not operating in China, but Microsoft, Apple, and LinkedIn are? Do you think China banned Meta and Google? Okay, first of all, this the common misconception is that China banned Google and, and Facebook. Now, China didn't ban them. All, China just required all the companies operating inside China have to operate yeah. within the Chinese laws, which means all the data of the Chinese users they collected must be stored inside China. That's a requirement that U.S. is now having, you know, for you know, for for and the U.S. and Europe and, and many companies are having the same requirement. So and on top of that. Um, you have to conform with the censorship uh, 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 requirement in, in China. So Google, they decided, you know what, uh, they will not comply with the, with the Chinese requirement. So they left. So Google was up. So back in 2009, up to 2009, all these American social media companies actually freely operated in China. At Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, um, and and. and from 2009, that's when China rolled out these requirements. They look okay. So your data, Chinese data of the Chinese user, must store in in China. You must uh, comply with the censorship laws in China. And that's when the companies like Google say, you know what, we, we can't we can't uh, deal with that. We we cannot comply, so we're gonna leave. So this is the difference between Google, Facebook, and 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 Microsoft. And uh, so, so, and, and link in uh, to that to some yeah. extent. Yeah. So, because it's it's just like whether I mean, inter censorship, it's it's true. You know, Chinese censorship is is more strict than than the than the, the current uh, uh, U.S. one on social media platform. But but you know that's that's the price of doing business in any country. You gotta uh, uh, comply with uh, local laws. It's Google just decide not to do that. That's what happened. Okay. Great. 